We brought back Joel Rubin, friend of the show, who has been helping us understand everything that's unfolding between Russia and Ukraine. Joel is the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. Now, the Biden administration says that they believe Russia is behind cyber attacks targeting Ukraine's ministry and defense, as well as banks in Ukraine. Do you think that this will have a spillover effect into the United States? Tabitha, it's a perfect question for the moment because cyber attacks are not limited just to one geographic space. They can uh, go viral across the world. And we've seen Russia attack the United States uh, repeatedly over the recent years, in particular during the 2016 election time period. So uh, we can't take for granted that they would only limit their attacks to Ukraine. I, I do know that the White House, they have been talking about this a lot. They've also had their senior cyber threat official head out to Europe over the past several weeks. Uh, Ann Neuberger, she has been engaging with our allies there as well as hardening our defenses back here at home. But uh, as you know, cyber is a very uh, multi-pronged uh, 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 attack or uh, uh, possibility of attack, and it could go into the private sector. So there's a lot of work that has to be done and uh, they're, they're paying attention to this very closely. And we've also been hearing a lot about the Minsk agreement, which is very complicated. I understand there's actually two of them. What are the terms of the second agreement? Well, the terms of the agreement are essentially to allow for a, a diplomatic process to resolve the, the conflicts in, in the Donbass region, uh, where there's still a hot war uh, in Ukraine and where their pro-Russian separatists that have been trying to extricate from Ukraine. Uh, we've just saw earlier in, in the day announcements about uh, from their leaders uh, of having families evacuate the area. So uh, somewhat of the pretext concern that the Biden administration has about using that as an excuse for Russia to say that uh, pro-Russian uh, Ukrainians are, are under assault. So there is a diplomatic process that's available through this Minsk dialogue. Uh, it's not fully satisfying to all sides, but uh, it can be a, a place where there could be more diplomatic engagement uh, if Russia chooses to actually use that as uh, as its process for resolving its concerns. And could the Minsk agreement actually help avoid a Russian invasion? Well, ultimately, avoiding the Russian invasion means that the Russians will have to take those diplomatic off ramps, Minsk being one potential forum for that. Yes, uh, strategic stability concerns, meaning our nuclear uh, nuclear weapons. Again, we and the, the, the Russians, the United States and the Russians hold 90 percent of the world's nuclear weapons. So there are opportunities to engage on that. There are certain security talks uh, about military uh, exercises in the region, NATO engagements. All of that can be used, Minsk, Minsk being one part of it, if Russia actually decides to take those diplomatic off ramps and have hard but important dialogue with the United States and with our allies. Let's talk nuclear for a second. Russia says that it will carry out nuclear readiness drills, but they hold massive drills on a yearly basis. Should this spark any concern? Well, certainly they could call off the drills if they wanted to. These are not required. These are uh, uh, decided upon for dates that are never fixed in stone. Uh, I think it's an act of desperation by Vladimir Putin to say to the West and to the United States, don't forget, I have nuclear weapons. It's, it's an empty threat. He's not going to use nuclear weapons. Uh, if he does, that would be uh, horrific, clearly. And uh, he understands that there would be a response as well. Uh, but it's a, it's a saber rattling maneuver. And, and this means that Vladimir Putin might feel that he's coming to the end of the threats that are available to him to try to extract concessions without giving anything up. And by what I mean, what I mean by giving anything up is pulling his troops back from the border not threatening our ally, Ukraine, a democratic country, and allowing for real hard diplomatic discussions on these security questions that he seems to be most concerned about. Now, U.S. officials have been pushing for a diplomatic solution. I think the world is pushing for a diplomatic solution at this point. Do you think that's still possible? We're going to hear some speeches over the next day or two. Uh, Vice President Harris is in Munich at a, a multilateral security conference. She's going to be speaking uh, tomorrow calling for that. There are always diplomatic paths available. Secretary Blinken, Secretary of State Tony Blinken may be meeting with the Russian foreign minister. They're looking potentially for next week if they can, can keep things on this track. The French and the Germans are involved. So uh, we have seen throughout history that wars could be avoided if diplomacy is worked. And there have always been discussions. Uh, oftentimes they fail and then war occurs. So, yes, there's still time, but Vladimir Putin has to look at what is coming at him, 
of unity amongst the West, of heavy sanctions and a potential protracted, very difficult military conflict. And he has to say, I need to take these diplomatic off ramps. That's the crucial decision that he has to take. Joel Rubin, as always, thank you for coming on. Thanks, Abitha.